to me, she wasn't my mom. It was the drugs. The drugs had completely taken over. She had absolutely no ounce of her personality or her left in her body. Holding family stepped in at the right time and did exactly the right thing for my family. There's no way out. I couldn't get myself out of it. I would have died if I hadn't gone to holding families. Holding Families is a service that supports children and families affected by parents using drugs or alcohol. We came together around about 2005 when um, ourselves, um, social care and adult treatment services recognised that there was um, a gap really in services. Adults were being treated in the adult treatment service. Young people potentially were coming through to our service and then obviously there were children going through to social care where parental substance misuse was an issue. And we were never commissioned particularly to work with um, those young people who didn't have their own treatment need but were living with parental substance misuse. And that need kept coming to us and coming to us so a group came together and then from that we grew the, the programme. What we do, we deliver a range of supports for families, including individual support sessions for parents, group work programme for parents, um, but the main focus of the work is on the children and young people. The children get the opportunity to tell their parents how they feel and about what their views and opinions are, and that has the most impact for parents to change and go into recovery from substance use. I have a partner, and we've been together 10 years. I have three children, two boys, one girl. I took heroin and crack. They simulate methadone. They used to watch me drink it out, with, out the bottle. They've seen me smoke cannabis and make joints. Me nine-year-old now, when he was like six, he started trying to make them. They seen me drinking. They used to bring me cans when I was being sick and things. They used to bring me a can. That'll make you better, Mummy. The little baby's sit next to her. And she'll be sat there and she'll just look at the baby like that and the baby will look at her. There's no connection sort of thing. I had to come out of work because she wasn't able to look after the kids. I was getting phone calls all the time. I was driving and I had to keep coming home from work. And uh, eventually I had to come out of work to look after her and the kids. I was five and a half stone. I couldn't even move in bed. I used to have to shout my partner to come and move me, turn me over, and my liver was really bad. I didn't wash for weeks. Didn't even get dressed. I'd just lie in bed all day, drinking. Um, I'd wake up and my partner would make sure I'd have all my medication at the side of me. I had to supply because if I didn't, if I didn't get her a, a, a drink or the drugs or anything like that. She'd be downstairs and she'd be you know, all over the place and the kids would be seeing her like that. So she was happy enough to get her stuff upstairs out of the way and then I'd sort the kids out, take them to school and you know, stuff like that, take them to the parks, get them out of the house or whatever. Just get them out of the environment, to be honest, because I didn't like them seeing what she was doing. There was myself and my ex-partner, and then my eldest daughter and a younger daughter who was 14 at the time. I thought everything was ticking along okay at the time, but with hindsight now I can see that my whole life revolved around heroin. Most days I would get to school simply to get her out of the way. Um, then my priority would be scraping some money together to go and score drugs, come home, use those drugs, go to sleep, wake up, scrape some more money together, go and score, come back, take the drugs, go to sleep. They would come home from school. Sometimes I would scrape her some food together, sometimes I wouldn't bother. And my life really revolved around living in my bedroom and injecting drugs, and that was it. I didn't have a relationship with my mum. My mum was locked, li literally locked in her bedroom. Uh, she was locked from the inside, we couldn't get in. I hardly ever saw her. When I did see her, she was 
not worth being with. I just basically kept myself to myself, looked after myself. If I didn't look after myself, my sister sometimes looked after me. I knew something was wrong and I, I guess looking back there was a lot of signs that it was drugs but you, do, you don't want to think, oh well my mum's on drugs. I came home from school one day, went to my mum's room. I was just pretty much banging on the, my mum's bedroom door, which was locked, not getting a response at all. And then somebody that I don't know, never seen before, opened my mum's bedroom door. My mum was on the bed and my mum's boyfriend was on the other side of the bed. They were both passed out. There were needles and drug stuff like all over the room and I just went over to my mum. And she just wasn't waking up. Eventually I was just like literally shaking her really roughly and she wasn't waking up. And at this point my heart was going, I was really panicking. I was like, oh my God. Her lip, her face was completely white. Her lips were blue. I tried to force her mouth open and there was like a load of gunk coming out of her mouth. And then I forced her eyes open and her eyes were really cloudy if that makes sense. Um, and she was just completely groggy, we're not concentrating, we're not listening to anything. I was literally just there screaming at her. She was just sort of falling back to sleep and I was just screaming at her. And I, I stormed out of the house and that's the point where she snapped out of it. And she came out into the street in her pajamas. I said I was gonna go and live with my grandma, I was never gonna talk to her again. I, I ended up telling her that she was dead to me. That's when she started being sort of responsive, saying, if I'm dead to you, I'm gonna go and kill myself or something. That was the point where I realised this wasn't my mum. One of the main barriers for mum in accessing um, fully the support that she needed was that services weren't actually working together. Also, she wasn't telling everybody all the issues that she had. So when she went to see the worker at the community drug team, she hadn't made them aware that she had any alcohol issues. But also she would send a partner to go and collect her medication. No one seen me. So they didn't know what state I was in until I went to holding families. And it was Katie that seen the state I was in and got things moving. And it was within a few weeks, I'd got into a detox, which it takes months and months to get into detox. So through holding families, I got in there in a matter of weeks. Because we always go out and see a family within the home and ask questions about the whole of her life and the whole of the family around her, we were able to get quite a bit more information. So it was really apparent that the mum was uh, was really unwell um, and that the children obviously weren't having their emotional health needs met by her, but also that their emotional health um, could be damaged by what they were seeing and witnessing within the home because mum's needs were so high that as much as dad would try and keep it away from the children, there was no way they could escape what was happening within the home. There was a real desire from mum to be back, have her daughter back living with her. There was a real sense that I want my daughter back. Um, and, that, and that was enough really, because at that time she couldn't see what were the barriers that were preventing that from happening or why it was deemed that actually the risks were there. Um, she couldn't see pa you know, past her, 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 her drug use, basically. By this stage, my youngest daughter wasn't living at home anymore. She, she had moved on. Um, and that was a motivation to go to holding families, um, to try and get her back, you know, to prove that I was doing the things they wanted me to do. Um, but it was completely forced. I didn't, I didn't want to go. Busy bodies prying into my life. But she had this desire to have her child back with her. And I think what we was able to do is uh, well, use that in the sense of this is what, why you can't because of your substance misuse and actually this is what you need to address in terms of your parenting and work around those aspects. What we use to evidence our outcomes is our family wheel and that we use on a one-to-one -one basis with all of our clients, so the parents, any kinship carers and the children and young people we support. The wheel includes areas such as health, drugs and alcohol, family and friends, um, and housing, so we get a really good picture of what's happening with the family and the family can address every area of their lives. And then in the family meeting, we look at all the different areas of the wheel. So it's not just about drugs and alcohol, it's about anything that's going on for them. 
When I was scoring the wheel assessments with the children, a lot of the factors that was covered, the children identified themselves to be red. So a lot of things they felt within their lives was red. The children would tell me, my mum is always poorer. My mum has to go to the chemist every day. My mummy has to drink medicine. Medicine makes my mummy poorer. And sometimes the children don't, won't have medicine for themselves if they was poorer, because they genuinely believed that, that would make, the medicine would make them poorer. Jerome, Holding Families Coordinator. Hi. Oh, yeah. right to come in? In the yeah. first meeting, they, they came in and they asked lots of personal questions. Um, but they were so encouraging, you know, to get the answers out. And we discussed my drug use and um, it, I think it was the first time that I'd been honest about it with, with any agency because of who they were and how positive people they were and encouraging they were. You can't lie to Jerome. Substance misuse with your key worker. When I come out of the, the hospital, the meetings then, um, yeah, they were useful. I could take more information in. Before, when I was going, before I went into hospital, no one could get through to me. I didn't, like, think about what I was doing, you know, how it was affecting people. There's things that the kids couldn't tell us that they'd talk to the worker. And she's very friendly, she talked to her. And my daughter used to love going to see her because she's like, you know, the chatty and all that lot. She'd tell her all sorts of things and then they'd come back to us and let us know how the kids are feeling. Because they can't tell me anything or anything because they just feel they don't want to tell us anything. So what's it like for you when mummy's poorly and mummy's maybe drinking? What does that feel like for you? At the family meeting, the same wheel assessment, if you like, would be carried out as a family. And I would usually encourage children to speak for themselves if old enough. Sometimes I'd encourage children to write a letter for mum or dad or both. Or basically I would just be the children's voice and sort of input whilst we was talking, discussing each section of the wheel, input um, the children's take on that and make parents aware that that is how their child felt. So holding families is mainly that's what well, that's what mainly what it is. It's it's how drugs and alcohol affect the people around you and your kids, not necessarily you know just you. And it is important because you don't realise when you're in that situation how it is affecting other people. For this particular family, it was very much everything was oh well, what's the point? Where where are we going with this? We can't you know they could not see how things were going to improve. So it started off very subtly in the sense of just showing them that there's a different side to this and almost giving them a bit of encouragement to persist with the process, making that, that effort, whether it be mum just popping round to grandmothers just to have dinner with them or, you know, picking up the phone to make that phone call to her daughter, you know, and it being okay that Right, you might only speak for a minute or she might not reply to your text messages, but it's about being there, showing willingness to actually engage in this process and start communication. And actually, you know, what was fortunate about this particular family is that they tried these things and found results from that. It was because of holding families that they, the first time we actually spoke to my mum in nine months was at a family meeting. I was, I was very scared. I, uh, I, I, she was very good at pretending she was going to change and acting and manipulating people, I guess. And I would actually sit there and believe it and think, oh God, she's going to change this time. And then whoever had come to spoke, speak to us would leave and she'd go, thank God that's over. And I was very, very sceptical. And it was all right, actually. Um, I was very reluctant to believe she would change. After everything, I was like, well, it's only a phase. She's not going to change. And uh, and over time, she did prove that this was a permanent thing. I don't think it was as, I don't think that there was a significant moment. I think more that it was a gradual drip, drip, drip of um, positivity and, and belief, and um, through through the, their guidance, especially with the family meetings, I was able to listen to my children, to what they wanted, 
um, coherently for the first time, you know, and, and actually take on board what they were saying. And it was all with Jerome and Alison's um, encouragement and um, they had this positivity that you just rode along with, you know, they, they took you along with that. The final family meeting with the family was, was a complete turnaround from where they were at the beginning. The weight had just been lifted off them all. You know, the kids were kind of quite relaxed, trusted us, were able to, to be happy and that they had a normal family life and this was really good. Uh, mum and dad were having a normal relationship again and being able to be equal. Um, and mum had cooked dinner for them all and that was her big thing that she, you know, she didn't, she lay on the couch all the time, she didn't do anything. But she was being a mum, she was playing with them, she cooked dinner, she was leaving the home. And every, they're just happy, relaxed, carefree. Life's really good now. What I'm doing now, what I never used to, what, what I didn't do, sorry, um, is be a mum and realise that I am a mum with three kids. I didn't register all that before. It was just drinking drugs and I didn't know how to love till I came out of hospital like 18 months ago. I didn't know how to feelings or anything. I just didn't have any, I just... And now, I'm a mum of three. I'm proud to be a mum of three. Uh, I'm drug free and drink free and I just love life with my kids at the moment and I'm enjoying every little bit of it. This Alison lady turned around and went, actually I've been to the house and it is a lot better, you know. It's up to you but if it would be rational uh, to go around and see and just give it a chance. And that's when I started to think, right okay, I, I will give it a chance, I'll go and see. I'll see what it's like. And that really opened a lot of doors, I guess. Uh, just even going round to Mum's house um, was a big step for me that I definitely would not have taken without holding families. The future for the family, I think it's, it, it's looking good. It's looking great now. Whereas before, it was nothing. It was killing me inside watching her like that and knowing I couldn't do anything about it. But holding families has shown me you can fight it, you can you, know, you can pull yourself back sort of thing and sort yourself out. If I hadn't got involved with holding families, I would still be using drugs. I would quite possibly still be with my ex-partner. I wouldn't have my daughter home. I would be kidding myself and living a lie. Holding families stepped in at the right time and did exactly the right thing for my family.